you. Therefore, of course, it can affect other things. If you're in a bad mood, it can affect your family. If you're in a good mood, it can affect your family. Consciousness has an effect, particularly when it is vocalised. Now, it may just turn out, I'm not saying this is what will happen, that the approach of Alanin, the sun can move anything it likes within its its motion. And if Alanin's coming, Alanin is coming for a reason. Now, let's see if the parasites, because they don't view the sun as a conscious being, they don't view the earth as a conscious being, they think we live once, they think we live now, the thing they fear is death, the thing they want is absolute power, and they will destroy anything that they that, that if it's given up. Let's say all the parasites do what parasites do, and they run away. Let's say they did that. Well, I can assure you about the only time that a meteorite will hit will probably be right on top of where all those parasites decide to hide. Well, that's leaving a sinking ship. Now, for some the change that we talk about might seem impossible. But let's see if they do leave this year, if the parasites do run away to a single spot. Let's see the miracles take place. Please don't feel, just because change is in the air, that it's the end. It is not the end. It is the beginning. And don't feel just because the parasites tell you that there is a substantial number of of objects that we can't avoid. The sun is listening. The earth is listening. The universe is listening and seeing your intention and strength. Everything that is happening is happening for a reason and this knowledge has not come simply to be wiped off. We have not come to this awakening simply to see us wiped into history and the parasites win. So that's enough for me tonight. We've gone over the time. I look forward to the questions. And I uh, thank you again. Uh, I thank Brian for getting us on to down a turn on, on the uh, call. And I look forward to answering your questions. And I look now into the chat. Please put question in caps. And then the question after that. And I will answer each and every question you put in. So thanks very much. And uh, let me answer any questions you now have. Now, while people are typing them in, I note a question from Truthseeker45 that has put in a question uh, prior. And Truthseeker says, what do you do when you go to court and the executor letter was issued prior to the court date but the court outright ignores it? You stand your ground, Truthseeker, because uh, what you're dealing with is a court that is absolutely breaking its own rules. You stand your ground. Remember, when you finally expose their laws and you stand on the principles of their laws, the only tools they have left to use are lies, intimidation, and uh, the deception. Well, lies and deception are really one and the same thing. So they were going to continue to do that. Intimidate you and lie. But stand your ground. And at every opportunity, make it known that you have not entered a plea, that you are representing the executor, the office of executor, and the matter must be dismissed. Now, they will fight like a, a, a fish on the line to the very, very end. But stand your ground on it, and if the court still refuses, raise the matter with the Attorney General. Rise it up the line, and I'll help you with the documents that we're doing in order to take it up the line. But do I expect them to do the wrong thing? Absolutely, they'll do the wrong thing. But the simple answer is stand your ground knowing the truth of how their law operates. There's no guarantee they'll do the right thing. So I hope that answers your question, true seeker. Um, a couple more questions. So please put the questions into the talk show chat because otherwise it's difficult for me to... Uh, get through them all. I've got another question from uh, that Gerald's collected up for us, and thanks, Gerald, for this. Soliel Soliel asked the question, without a plea, does a controversy exist? No, it doesn't. 
the plea is the perfection of jurisdiction and the controversy. Uh, if no, can a judge have jurisdiction if there's no case or controversy? No, the only jurisdiction that the judge has and will use to their effect is that they are the priest of a temple and can call on the temple guards to detain you. So they will do that. Yes, they will detain you. That's the only power, the raw power they have left. So the answer to that is, do, do they have a controversy exist? No. Uh, can a judge have jurisdiction if there's no case? Controversy? No. Uh, Guest 49 asks, how do we teach a whole group of people who is harassing you and is violating a discrimination, uh, a discrimination of civil rights? Let me, let me answer that by someone that was around 2,000 years ago and was a pretty good teacher of things, albeit his words have been deliberately corrupted and the very wicked criminals we're speaking about claim, in fact, to represent this individual. And it is, you teach people by example. You teach people by your behaviour. Let me tell you, each and every one of you that shows the competence and knowledge by devouring the information and improving the information. I'm not the sole source. I'm, I'm merely he, here as an enabler. But by your action and by your behaviour, you will do more to teach them than a million pages and a thousand websites. So the short answer is by the action and by your deeds and actions, you will be helping make change. And those young lawyers and young prosecutors and people that go to court and see what happens, they may not say it to you, but they will certainly go away and they'll be talking about it. What took place, what they witnessed, that is change. Uh, question 49, uh, Guest 49 has another question here. Can executives litigate in court for someone damaging you by violating your constitutional given rights. Can executive litigating court for someone damaging you by violation of your constitutional given rights? Uh, I have to say, guess 49, you might want to rephrase that because I can't answer it because there's presumptions in your, your um, question. Uh, the executor is the executor of a particular trust, a constructive trust that represents the controversy in front of the court. Litigation um, and pr proceeding to litigate, I'm, I'm, I'm really not clear. So I can't really other than say the executor can order the matter to be dismissed, yes. The executor can expose uh, anyone making a presumption like the pro say cutis and say that the presumptions that they have made are false and can have them uh, expelled from the matter and not able to represent. Yes, an executor has enormous power in relation to the trust for which they are the executor. But beyond that, I'll need you to ask your question again, just so we're clear. Uh, Genro um, asks a question. Could you please expand on how we're inside the sun? Yes, uh, look, to that, Genro, I need you to, to take some time and, and have a look at the Eucadia patents on www.ukadia.com to maybe read the journey of UCA and then to read the canons of natural law. The, this is probably going to be a subject for another chat because I don't want to go too far. There's questions to, that people are asking, so I want to be able to answer them all. But what I'd say to you is, is our perception when we look at the sun and what we're taught is that we are separate to the sun even though we are bound by the gravitational fields of the sun, the electromagnetic fields of the sun. In that perception, what the scientists want us to believe is that even though we are bound in life and death to the sun and we are absolutely bound through the fields of the sun to the sun, that we separate those fields from the, the sun itself and view that merely as the totality of the sun. 
Uh, it, it's, it's the same mindset that says, when I talk about the parasites, that they are somehow separated, separated spiritually and physically from the rest of our species. Well, that, that's just not right. Whether, whether someone attacks me or not, they are a representation of part of me. I have the same ability to behave in a parasitic fashion as a judge does. In fact, I would argue that many of the people who live, who operate within the truth movement, sadly, behave far worse in parasitic behaviour than uh, the, the most senior parasites. Look at the promotion of gold, for example, making promotion of gold as lawful money. Gold is the single reason that, that the parasites, the leading parasites, have stayed in power for millennia. And who are the greatest advocates for gold? Well, the greatest advocates are inside the truth movement. We don't need gold. We don't want gold. We won't have gold. Gold as a medium, as an underwriting medium for, for currency, is considered a crime in the code. We Instead, we create spiritual gold, universal gold credits, and we say that the underwriting, all the underwriting we need for currency is the fact that the divine grants us our rights and no one stands between us and the divine and collectively we allow these currencies to exist. So the short answer is, even if you read the science and see that the earth is within and around the electromagnetic fields of the sun, the only reason that we don't see ourselves inside the sun is that science put an arbitrary line and said, just because you are in the fields of the sun, you're outside the sun, and that what you see during the day is, is the totality of the sun. So what they've done is they've image changed us. If you think about what I've said, I'm sure you'll see that it's just changing the perception. The answers are in front of you. Uh, Truth Seeker 45 asks uh, uh, another question. What do you do when you go to court and the executive letter was issued? I will cover that. Uh, yep. Um, Mammy, when, when entering the court to establish uh, standing, do you not stand when the judge comes in and avoid claiming the name and standing? Uh, your question dropped off. I know a number of you... Um, have not stood when a judge comes in. Uh, some say stand. Look, there are certain rituals that are immaterial and there are certain processes that are fundamental. The plea is a fundamental component that perfects jurisdiction and the controversy. Whether you stand or not stand is immaterial. So let's put that in perspective. Uh, yes, don't stand, by all means, but all I'd suggest to you is there is a risk always when you don't stand that immediately you have shown a lack of uh, honour and a lack of respect. Now, if you're there to sort out a matter, you should be on the presumption that the judge will behave properly. So out of respect, I would... Stand. The same would be when, when the Roman pontiff you know, cruises down the road. It would be disrespectful to um, you know, throw tomatoes. What I'm saying is just, just respect is an important thing. It shows that you are there and you can make a distinction between respecting the law and the office of the law and the way people behave. So personally, um, I, would, uh, I would stand out of respect but it's a minor thing. It's a tiny thing compared to other things like plea. Uh, Ron asks, Hi, Frank. Uh, as you know, I'm uh, way past the executive letter. Yes, you are. <laughs> way past the first hearing. The judge is rejecting my EDPs. What should I do? Uh, Ron, I, I think this is why we introduced the, the revision to the EDP process. We didn't remove the, well, we, we changed the pages and the original EDP process is still up uh, on the site. But the reason we introduced the 
second version of the EDP process was for this